This is a mycorrhizal test that a few people have asked for. It's between Great White Recharge and Dynamico. To begin this test, I took 18 cups and I filled them up with a mycorrhizae Coco Coir mix. This stuff in bale form is extremely packed up, so I first put this all into a pail, mixed it all up, break up all the clumps before I could get my mixing in. The nutrients for this test are going to be Master Blend Tomato Formula, and this time I'm actually going to be using tomatoes with this stuff. I mix this all up in a four gallon pail and this is the nutrients that all the plants will be getting. Now as per the instructions from the manufacturer, I'm going to take this stuff and dilute it half with tap water. To pre-moisten this, this half nutrient, half tap water blend is going to get mixed up in a pail, break up all the clumps, and then I'm going to go through the painstaking process of filling up all of these little cups so they have the same amount of coco coir. And once I have that, I'll take a small scoop of each inoculant, put it inside this cup, and I will mix it up. Now this took quite a while, but uh, I think it's the fairest way to get a result out of this. I did the same for every different nutrient blend for the Recharge and the Great White. All the cups and utensils were washed in between. Once I had my cups all filled up, mixed, and labeled A, B, and C, I could begin to plant the tomato seeds. The seeds I decided to use were from the best tomato we had out of our garden for last year because I want that same variety going into the garden and these plants will all get planted outside. If you stick around to the end I'll show you a little trick for planting uh, tomato plants to get you uh, better plants in the garden. Now what I did to plant these seeds I put way more than what was required on the top of all of these cups and I just kind of pushed them in with a little spoon. And the reason I did this is I want to make sure that I have at least one good plant germinating from each uh, cup and what I'll do is I'll just thin them out later on. Once I've got everything planted, the place for these things to go is the turbo germination station that I've got. There's more info if you want to build yourself one of them, I'll throw a link up top. I find germination happens remarkably fast if the temperature and humidity are really good. The magic germination temperature for this experiment is going to be 24 degrees. I'll turn on my nursery heat pad remotely and I'll cover them up. So after three days, you can already see a lot of the plants are starting to come up. It did not take long with my turbo germination station. This is also the point where as soon as I see the uh, greens coming up, I immediately remove the plants from the tray or from the germination station and put them out into open air. Any cups that do not have plants coming up yet are going to go back underneath the lid. Now just one day later, this is what the results look like. Everything is up and I've got way more tomato plants than what I need. Now something to note about the germination here, uh, I just dumped a bunch of seeds in all of them, but it kind of already looks like there might be a difference here between B and C. There seems to be a lot more up in uh, B and uh, the far side of C has done really well as well. And I just dumped a bunch of seeds into all of these cups. Whether that's me being inconsistent, that could also be a factor here, but uh, something to keep in mind. I'll wait till the leaves open up here and actually uh, my wife had looked after these while I was gone at work and what we did is we just thinned them out and left the best looking plant for every single cup. The date of all these thinned out seedlings here, the single plants by themselves, is April the 10th. We'll fast forward through 15 days of growing here. You guys can watch the plants grow and they are kept in their respective places, A, B and C. So A is on the left, B is in the middle and C is on the right. Alright, so after 15 days of growing, every one of these cups has got roots coming out of the bottom, so I'm going to transplant these into a larger cup. But I figured this would also be a great opportunity to take all these plants and kind of see how the root structure is looking inside of the cup. I'll do a side by side here on the screen of A, B and C, and you can make your own judgment on which one you think is better, or if they're all pretty equal. At this point in time, for me, I think all the plants are doing pretty much the same. They're all looking very good.
and a look before and a look after they're all repotted. I did keep labels for every single one of them so that we don't get anything mixed up. So if I had to make a judgment right now, I think C is probably the best one after transplanting the plants, but uh, I guess only time will tell and uh, maybe once I review the footage, my opinion might change. Now at this point in time, uh, I kind of figured too, it might be a good time to re-inoculate all the plants. After the transplant was done, I gave every plant another scoop of its mycorrhizal inoculant and I watered that in as well. Now because I've got them further spread out at this point in time, I can't guarantee that the A, B and C are going to be in their respective order. I have shuffled them around and I do shuffle them around to keep the uh, same amount of light if there is a lighting difference. So you'll kind of see that here, they go into different trays and they get swapped around and uh, the plants do move locations. But you still get a chance to see the different plants grow throughout this setup. So this is where things are looking at May the 1st and you can see I've uh, also added a strawberry there that's uh, a runner I've clipped off the strawberry in the Dutch bucket grow uh, behind these plants. As an added bonus or as an added oops, uh, things are getting busy or too busy for me during this experiment. You can kind of see at some point there is going to be some neglect happening here. The plants, they are not watered well enough and that's because I've gone to uh, a different job and I'm changing employment at the same time as I'm trying to do the videos and keep up with the channel. Maybe it adds to the test, maybe it takes away from it. Uh, I couldn't tell you. But in, in any case, uh, everything is being neglected equally. You can really see it in this video here. The plants are uh, definitely not watered enough. My bad. The next day after a good watering though, everything perked back up, but it still has hurt the growth a little bit. As a little bonus here, I know I've done an experiment in the past where uh, RO versus tap water. Now I was convinced uh, at the time, tap water is fine, but apparently something has changed with my local municipal water. Anyway, look at the bottom of this pail. There is a lot of uh, precipitates in there, and uh, it's time to change back to RO for the future at least until the tap water stabilizes. Now this is probably due to local flooding and whatever in the area. We were actually under a boil water advisory, so I don't know if that pertains to what, you're, what we're seeing there. So I let this trial go until May the 20th, and here we can take a look at the comparisons, and they are gonna go in order A, B, and C, and you guys can pick whatever you like the best, and uh, we'll reveal it at the end. So I did put a tape measure beside there as well. Uh, in A, looks like 15 inches is about as tall as the tallest plants have gotten. Maybe just shy of that, 14 and three quarter, 14 and a half. And uh, we can take a look at the root structure as well. All the plants seem to do uh, have done pretty decently. Uh, no complaints on it really. In my mind, this is already now the weakest of the three different inoculants. I think B and C are pretty neck and neck, and we'll show them next year. This is B, tallest plant being uh, about 17 and a half maybe, 17 and a half to 18 inches tall, and uh, really good roots in all the cups, and the plants do look a little bit better than uh, A as well, even the uh, shorter ones. Moving over to C, tallest plant here is uh, about 15, uh, maybe just shy again, 14 and a half for the tallest one. And uh, here's the root structure on all of them. And I'll zoom back out so we can take a uh, final look at the outside of them. That's kind of cool, this little white thing. I don't know if that's a really, uh, like a fungus hotspot or what that is exactly. Decent plants and all very consistent. I think this is probably the most consistent of the six cups at sea. All right, so what's what? So if you want to have an unbiased opinion for yourself on this one, now is the time to choose A, B, and C, and you can go back to the middle part of the video to see the repotting phase as well before the reveal. And to be honest, actually, I totally forgot which one was what, and I'm very happy I put a sticky note on the containers. So B is great white, and uh, recharge is A, and we got dynamico as letter C. Now there could be a disease going around with the, the tomatoes as well that they don't look entirely as good as they could have been. It might not just be neglect. As you can see in the uh, Dutch bucket grow behind us here, there's a tomato in there kind of doing the same thing. And the strawberries and my kale and peppers are absolutely performing fantastic. 
as a little piece of bonus footage here when you plant these things outside take your tomatoes the day before clip them all the way up so you only have two or three true leaves at the top uh, the longer the length here the better actually and I like this uh, drill that I've got on Amazon here to make the holes I make the hole and then I plant them super deep so there's actually not much of other than about an inch anything below an inch of the bottom growth is all uh, planted deep now I have tried the uh, method where you go sideways and that just hasn't worked well for me to persuade the plant to do that I find deep planting uh, just does the trick now I did keep them in the garden in A, B and C so on the front right that's A on the left there that's B and the back corner there that's C so I mean this at this point in time it's going to be very variable but I want to kind of see if it, there's any effect on the production of these plants throughout their life cycle and I will update you guys on the channel.